everyone, and welcome to a brand new pre-recorded series of Distant Worlds 2. I finally decided to sit down and do that tonight. Um, it's like 2 in the morning right now. I got my coffee. I'm good to go. And I'm just going to have a sip of that right now. Okay, so what are we up to today? I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm just going to go extreme harsh and see where we end up. <laughs> I've tried multiple times to get this series going, and I just, yeah, something happens, and this didn't work, that didn't work, and yeah, I'm just ditching the footage. So I figured I'd crank everything right up, we'll go for broke, and I'd probably end up broke, so <laughs> we'll do it that way. Uh, we are running version 1.73, which is the latest beta at the time of recording. And it's got some uh, some new stuff in it beyond the uh, latest stable. So if you're a little adventurous and want to try out the betas, there's some extra features that have been implemented uh, beyond the uh, latest update, the discovery update. So definitely grab a copy and uh, yeah, and see what you can do with it. So we're going to do, like I said, an extreme harsh. I figured I'd just throw caution to the wind while See how long we survive. This will either be a very short series or a very long one, depending on which way it goes. And I'm picking a random race, so I have no idea who we're playing yet. Uh, you guys probably know better than I do at this point uh, what I'm playing. There's the thumbnails and the titling and everything. So uh, keep it to yourself. I don't want to know yet. Right? <laughs> Anyways, yes, we're going to play a game of Extreme Harsh today and uh, see how far we get. And uh, we'll see what we get. All right, so, um, yeah, uh, I have no plan for this series other than to try and survive it. <laughs> That's my biggest plan. So we'll go through the startup and we'll uh, show you what settings we're going to be using. And once again, I'm going spiral 1500, 10 by 10. That's my comfort size. So uh, we'll do that once more. We'll go to the next screen and we'll see what we're doing here. We're going to be starting pre-warp again. Yep. I have to start in pre-warp or I just can't get going on a, on a advanced starts. I just I just can't seem to do it properly. So uh, I start pre-warp and build up and figure it out that way. Uh, Galaxy Aggression, I'm going to leave on Restless, which is default. The difficulty, I'm going to crank up to Extreme. Uh, hostile players, we're going to leave normal because I got settings at the end of the setup here that I'm going to implement rather than use this. So we'll leave that at normal. I'm not looking to be overly um, extreme on the actual hostile players. I'm going to leave, uh, like I said, the uh, Galaxy Aggression at Restless, which is default. I'll leave this at normal. Our research speed, I'm going to leave at normal. We're going to use uh, only next research path visible, and we're going to do the random path uh, research pathing. So there's some things we may not get, we may have to steal or trade for. And I'm going to leave tech trading on just in case that does mess with us. All right, and over here, we're going to go very many pirates strong. I'm tempted to go very strong, but I'm not going to. This is going to be hard enough without sending cruisers into my pre-war games, right? We're going to go very many strong, uh, keep them average, stay dead sort of thing. And Crank up the pirate, uh, this creatures again, just so I can complain about how many creatures there are. I just love doing that. <laughs> so we'll go next to colonization. Um, rare, rare, 100%. This is default here, but I cranked it back from normal on these two. Um, that sometimes bites me in the butt, but I can usually find enough stuff to get going. Race, random, don't care. We'll take whoever we get. The only one I might re-roll. There's a couple that might re-roll. Uh, first of all, the, um, the Gazurians. I have a live stream going right now with the Gazurians, so I'd rather not double up on them. Um, who else am I not going to play? Probably not Tekken. It's too harsh with their startup uh, financial situation, so uh, we're going to have enough problems without uh, dealing with that. Uh, who else do I not want to play? Hakanish, especially Hakanish feudalism. Uh, the unhappiness at um, coup d'etat time is pretty severe on, on the harsh settings. So I'm probably going to avoid them as well. I'm probably going to avoid the boss garn as well. Uh, hide mines and uh, harsh starts are kind of difficult. But beyond that, I think I'll take whoever we're dealt. So we'll do that. And we're going to pick a nice neutral flag color here. 
and we'll just go with whatever's allowed by race. And we're going to go with our harsh home system. This is going to be pretty horrible. <laughs> so favorability of our home system. This includes factors like resource abundance. So we're going to see some very low percentages on uh, the resources we do find when we find them. Population level of our home colony. So our max population on our home world is probably going to suck big time. The presence of other favorable plants in the system. So we may not get anything colonizable for a bit. Pretty harsh start. And our, our suitability is going to start anywhere from 17 to 23 in that range somewhere. If it if it's below 20, we're going to have additional uh, support costs for our colonies. So I'm praying that we don't get that. that We get at least 20 or better. But we'll see how that works out. Uh, I'm going to try to take my first map roll. Whatever it gives us, we'll just play with it. And we'll see what that does for us. And I'm going to start with my usual uh, spread out here. Uh, I've basically taken 12 empires. I've put in four at average distance. i put four at distant. i put four at very distant. If this wasn't a harsh game, I would put one nearby here as well, along with these three wild cards I got going. These three here might end up right beside us. We don't know. They might end up out by the very distant guys. We just don't know. These are just wild cards to uh, be put in the game. Now they might start, I'm not sure how the, the, the generators, uh, if I start in a harsh system, does if I auto-generate, does that put everybody at a harsh system? I don't know. I haven't really investigated that far. So these three might start in a harsh system, just like us. I'm not sure. But these guys are all going to start in a normal home system. So we're going to be at a massive disadvantage because of that. They're going to start with 20 suitability better than us in our in world. So we're not going to fare very well at that. Um, I always turtle my early games with the hope of catching up later. <laughs> I usually don't, but we hope for that. So yeah, anyways, that's how the galaxy is going to be set up. And uh, yeah, with this setup, uh, basically it's going to bump us to one of the edges probably. And then it's going to put the very distant at the other side. And then we'll have our distance here. Then our average is here. And then wherever the wild cards end up. That's going to do. Okay. And up here, we're going to go with a... It's basically a sandbox game. I'm not turning these off because I do like the victory screen. And it uh, enabled me to uh, judge how well I'm doing. So, um, yeah. That's what this allows. Otherwise, everything is just shut off. And you just... Have all right, so this way I can at least judge myself against the other empires. I know I'll suck anyways, but <laughs> I don't expect to do very well here. But we're going to try it anyways. Um, dig into a couple of inter interesting uh, situations. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start generating the game. Um, it's going to take a minute and a half or so to do so. Um, I have to sit through it, but you don't, thanks to the power of editing. So see you on the flip side. Okay, apparently we're going to be the Mortalins, and we are going to be a military dictatorship, and we are the Mortalin hegemony. Uh, we are the Mortalin, who are typically very aggressive, very dependable. Mortalin have natural skills in war awareness reduction, weapon re uh, research, armor research, mining rate, ship maneuvering, troop recovery rate, damage control, and ship maintenance savings. Our leader is going to be renamed, but he's skilled in uh, military ship construction speed. Our home colony is Odin 1, a rocky desert planet in the Odin system. Nearby is a rocky metallic moon, Pesti. Yesti, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> um, our faction has primitive technology. We're just beginning to take our first steps into space. Explore, expand, and conquer. Absolutely. Let's get started. In we go. All right. Let's see what we end up with here. And first thing we always do when we start a game in distant worlds is we pause right away. Get things started. Look here. Ooh, nice. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to quickly rename Odan 1 to Odan Prime. All right. And we'll have a quick look at our uh, initial system here. I think we're probably going to be okay. This, it's pretty lean. Uh, again, we got a pretty harsh start here. So we do have an unknown ship. So there's a surprise here. Uh, either a pirate base or something we can repair. We have. Um, and our next. Neighborhood is probably going to be all right. Yeah, we should be able to get around here. 
Uh, we're starting in a bit, which is good. And uh, yeah, so there's a galaxy. All right, so coming in, and we are the mortal and I. Right. Well, let's go see what the Warnold is about. And what's our government again? Military dictatorship. So let's have a look at those two items. And we have a leader, which we'll look at in a sec. Okay, so let's come down to alien races and we will have a look at the Mortalin. The Mortalins are a fierce half mammal, half reptile race. They are have extremely fast reflexes and an ability that can surprise the most unfamiliar with them. They are easily provoked by the slightest insult and will pursue an enemy relentless until they get their ven uh, vengeance. So we like our revenge. Mortalins are excellent warriors. They pursue the uh, a pursuit they spend much of their time perfecting. Their warrior code is highly developed. Mortalins consider defeating an enemy in a battle as the highest possible achievement. They are widely recognized as, as and almost certainly the best fighters in the galaxy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they have developed powerful vectoring engine, the Swift Vector. This advanced engine component gives mortal and starships unrivaled agility and maneuvering. Mortalins enjoy a fairly simple life following many tra ancient traditions. These traditions mainly focus on honor and risk taking. One particular tradition requires any male seeking tribal le uh, leadership to hunt and kill one of the fearsome Mortak. Mortaks are terrifying large monsters that inhabit the vast sandy desert wastelands of the mortal and homeworlds. The name Mortalin means Slayer of the Mortak. Mortalins are, are normally found living in uh, simple block dwellings in scrub-covered canyons, floors of rocky desert planets. They can also be found in sandy desert and uh, other desert planets as well. And we have various stats of uh, aggression, the very aggressive, yep, very aggressive. Uh, their caution is neutral, so we'll just rush in and uh, blindly start firing and stuff, I guess. Dependability, we're very dependable. So once you get us on board, we will uh, definitely be working with you for a long time. Uh, reproduction rate is moderate. Uh, migration is neutral. And assimilation rate is resistance. So if anybody takes one of our plans, they're going to have a bit of a time trying to bring us around. Uh, colonization, su uh, colonization suitability stuff here. I uh, won't go into too much into these details. Uh, bonuses, we're going to look at our main bonus list when we're done, so I won't go too too deep into that. But we do get some, lots of war-related war stuff, armor research, um, yeah, damage control, ship maintenance savings, troop recovery. So we're very war-focused. Our starting research is uh, energy torpedoes, kinetics, uh, some ground combat, uh, ship, starship maneuvering, which is great. Gets us one step closer to... Um, uh, shipboarding. Uh, armor plating, which we start with, which is awesome. We can put our uh, armor on our stuff. I, oh, I don't have to research. This is one of my first researches, so I don't have to research that this time. And some basic target tracking as well, which is one of the first things I usually spy for anyways. And mortal and tech, the pulse torpedo, multi-lock sensors, and swift vector. And victory race conditions, we're not even, we're not even worried about victory here. Super early in the morning, so I'm drinking coffee right now. So we need to have the most experienced admiral, the most experienced general, win at least seven percent of our wars, conquer the most enemy colonies, and vassalize the most empires in the galaxy. So win at least seventy percent of our wars means we need to be able to achieve a war victory. I'm guessing if we have a better score than the other one when we go to peace, that's considered a win. So work towards that, and we have some of the best troops in the game, I believe. Um, yeah, maintenance uh, or defense is 210, which is amazing. And our, that's going to reflect on our, um, uh, our station's uh, anti-boarding abilities and everything, too. And our attack is 140. So I think these are somewhat, I'm pretty sure they're the best in the game. I have to read, uh, look at everything else. But um, I don't think anybody else has a defense at 210. I think they're the only ones that are over the 200 mark. I could be wrong. I haven't really done any comparisons. Okay, so anyways, that's our race, and we'll have a look at our government quickly, military dictatorship. Military dictatorships is an auto, auto, autocratic form of absolute rule that is unrestricted by law, constitutions, or other social and political factors. Military dictatorships re, uh, regulate nearly every aspect of public and private behavior of their subject. Their political, social, and civil structure is tuned towards military concerns and warfare. These type of governments are typically concerned with conquest and expansion. Yep. And again, very war-focused bonuses here. I get, we'll look at the total bonus list when we're done here. And we'll go through these individually until we get to our master list here. 
And our typical leader term is 60 years. He gets replaced by a coup d'etat, which is highly disruptive. So we have to be very careful. If we take any new planets, like invade any new planets around that time that this leadership is going to happen, that we're well defended. We have to leave lots of troops on the ground at these points for any new colonies. Uh, the, established, <clears throat> the established colonies should be fine uh, for the most part. And our leader is replaced from admirals and generals. And we start with improved escorts, system patrol ships, so we get better escorts and uh, frigates right at the gate. And then uh, we research complete as shock forces, so that gets us our military our, uh, armor and all that kind of good stuff. So we start with those techs, which is awesome. Anyways, that's what our race and government is all about. All right, so come over here, and we just had to look through all this. We'll go through that again, but we'll go to our master bonus list here. All right, so this is how everything combines. This is where you go to find out all where all your empire bonuses are. So we're going to start with some armor research from our race, troop research from our military dictatorship of government, weapons research from our race and government, 35%. Wow. Nice. Uh, so we don't get a, um, looking through this, uh, we don't get a uh, research bonus at our home world by the looks of it. A bit of a preview going through this. Um, yeah, we don't have a research location at home, but we'll have one at the moon. So we'll get started with that. Uh, war awareness is going to be super good, 80%. Very nice. Uh, mining rate, plus 40, which is amazing, actually. Especially on this start. Uh, because we have a harsh system start, uh, a lot of our resources are going to come in at low abundances. So um, that bon right, mining rate bonus is going to be a, a very good one for us. Uh, I'll probably put extra mining engines on my uh, bases anyways, just to help out with that. Uh, ship maneuvering, yes, we're very good on the ship stuff. Uh, troop recovery, damage control, ship maintenance savings, we're not so much on the diplomacy. Population growth always takes a hit along with happiness, so get used to it. <laughs> uh, counter espionage, so we won't be very hard, easy to spy on, thank God. Uh, troop recovery uh, recruitment rate is 30%. So even if I get a poor recruiter general, we're still probably going to be okay as far as troop recruitment. We can work around a poor recruiter anyways. So. And troop maintenance savings plus 35%. Uh, calling corruption reduction plus, uh, that's going to be minus 15 worse than usual. So we're going to have some uh, corruption issues, I think. A tourism income is minus 30, so tourism isn't going to really uh, do much for us. So I'll probably put that uh, building resorts off just a little bit and get other stuff done maybe uh facility maintenance plus 10 trade income military construction speed plus three this is all leader studs here i'll we'll have a look at our leader in a sec and ship construction and facility construction speed so um overall it doesn't look bad uh, of course we're not much in diplomacy or growth or anything right but uh i think militarily we're going to be very strong and keep in mind, we are in the harsh extreme uh, setting, so uh, yeah, these are going to be pretty hard to maintain, I think. I'm sure our leader is going to uh, mess us up somehow. And our leader, of course, has to be Montezuma. Because I'm an awesome warlord, right? <laughs> A whole bunch of... Oh, I'm disorganized. That pretty much fits. <laughs> As you'll see going forward, I'm a bit disorganized, so sure. I'll take it. I'll live it. Why not? And we have him for how long? 60 years. So 2814, I think, is when we get our leader change in around there, give or take a few years. So we'll just have to be mindful of that date. That we don't have any new colonies that need to be defended a little heavier. Okay, so he's disorganized, but uh, I don't I do not dismiss leaders. Doesn't matter how bad they get, I work around it. And if this guy gets corrupt, I'm going to be in big trouble. So this is either going to be, like I've said, a very long playthrough or a very short one. Yeah. Okay, so that's our leader, Montezuma. And while we're right beside this tab, I just want to come in and have a quick look at what my automation is all at. And I guess you guys would like to know as well. Uh, basically, everything's on. Everything except tax race is either on manual or suggest. I don't monkey with these a whole lot. I might in this playthrough, depending on how things go, but uh, I generally leave that alone. And everything else, like I said, is on manual or uh, suggest. Uh, I'm going to come into construction just quickly and just see what our focus is. 
We are heavily focused on rail guns and torpedoes, but I want to set up some secondary stuff here. I think I get beams. That's our secondary, I think. Rail gun and beams, torpedoes, and maybe missiles as secondary. This is just going to help the suggestions in here. We really don't need to, because I'm manually controlling everything, I don't really need to set any of this. But in case you guys are wondering just how to do all this, uh, we'll just go ahead and do it. So I've set up uh, primary and secondary. Primaries were already set by a race, but the secondaries I've kind of selected here. So any kind of suggestion, or if you're automated, the AI will actually research and uh, look towards this uh, next step. And I think that's all I need to look at. Maybe military have a quick look in here to make sure we are always going to capture. Yep. We're always going to capture all our ships. Perfect. All right. And funding levels. I'm just going to quickly come in and think until we get out of warp pre-warp i'm just going to go with 100 growth and then once our uh, research labs come on and require funding we'll uh, pop some money down that way now <laughs> i should point out this is going to be zero anyways so i could even just go 50 50 on this uh we're not going to see any money down here for a long time if ever during this game so this is going to be pretty extreme so we're probably not going to see any funding here. So I'm just going to leave it 50 50. If some happens to trickle down here, then we're just going to evenly distribute it between growth and research. So, but like I've said, this is going to be zero for pretty much the early game and maybe into the mid game anyway. And there's our economy. We're starting at 17 one. This is going to drop like a stone. You'll see that happen as we start up. So we're not going to look at that too much yet, but let's have a look at our home world at this point. Uh, like I said, we are a suitability of 22. So when you go to a, a, a harsh, yeah, harsh uh, homeworld start, your homeworld suitability is anywhere from about 20 down to 17 over to 23. So we're at the high end of the suitability here, which is awesome. Otherwise, this thousand would be more expensive. Some of these starts are like 17% or uh, 17 suitability, which is below 20 which means we incur extra costs. So if you start at 17, you're going to have even more money take uh, in support costs here. But because we did start beyond 20, we're just at the base 1,000, which is awesome. And I'm just going to take the automation off of uh, troop recruitment and uh, population policies here. I got the master switch sh shut off in our uh, policy settings, but in case later I want to throw that automation on, then at least not everything is automated right away. I can go through and pick and choose what planets I want to automate. So that's kind of why I kind of do all the stuff as I go. All right. So anyways, uh, we are going to grow to a measly 3.5 billion on this planet. This is tiny. Yes, we are going to have some uh, homeworld issues. We might be moving our homeworld at some point. So we got that to look forward to. As far as finance numbers and everything, this isn't going to make sense till we fire the game up. So we're just going to ignore all that. Now we'll come back and revisit that in a bit. All right, and uh, what else do we have to look at here? Um, let's look at the ground. We have unknown items. We got two unknown items here. Hopefully one is a luxury. That would be nice. And hopefully the other one's silicon because that's always my crunch on uh, these kind of starts with silicon or polymer, one of the two. But we'll have a look at that when we get into our resource list here. Uh, we have four ships in the queue. And that's uh, just the, you just start with these, so. Um, I've seen people delete these. Don't delete them. They're already paid for, for the most part. Um, uh, we have a freighter here. Now, I noticed that the mining ship does not get, uh, we don't get the money for this mining ship. All we get is the money for the small freighter, which is your 2656. Our, uh, ship lists here. Uh, where are we here? Do, 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 do. A small freighter, 2656. Mining ship. 2432 there's no sign of that 2432 so i'm not sure why we don't get that we do get the money for the uh freighter that's here though so yeah we kind of get burnt for that for some reason i'm not sure what it is but there it is <laughs> not a big deal uh anyways uh let's push on uh so we got a couple of unknown resources here let's have a look at our master resource list here uh, if you click on this it'll just uh, stay open Okay, so uh, generally, if you start near a fuel source, you'll only get 6,000 Kezlon. So we didn't start near as fuel source, so we get 12, a little bit extra. And with that in mind, keep, keep that in mind as we look through the rest of this. 
Okay. So first thing I'm noticing in these numbers is a lot of them are kind of like we got a good supply here. This is actually really good. There's no triple digits on anything. Still, we got 11,000 of. So that tells me a couple things right off the bat before we even get going is number one, because the amount of polymer we have, we're not going to have that in our home system. It's not going to be anywhere in our home system. So we're going to have to source that from somewhere else. I can tell just because we got a lot of it at the beginning, beginning of the game. So that's telling me that there's no polymer here. Uh, carbonite might be questionable. That's 3000, which is higher than anything else. So that might not be available here either. And we're probably not going to see a couple other things here as well in this uh, system. So we're going to have to source some stuff from outside our home system, which means we got to watch our numbers here and how we spend our resources. It's going to be pretty tricky to build out. Yeah, so I'm going to guarantee that polymer will not be in our system. Possibly carbonite either, but maybe. All right, so that's what's on the ground. We have no luxuries whatsoever. Not a single luxury. Logan's Island. <laughs> I'm not a singer. <laughs> Just letting you know. I'm not quitting my day job. Okay, so anyways, that's our resort. That's our situation on the ground. Uh, is there anything else we need to look at? Not really. Um, yeah, we'll look at the numbers a bit more once we fire up. All right, so I'm um, going to come across. We'll have a quick look at our leader again. Age disorganized, that's fine. We'll work around that. Uh, we have an, uh, one of our exploration ships in the queue here. I'm going to take that off automation. And then I'm going to come over to construction. And I'm going to take that off automation. And we'll manually control those two ships. The freighter and the miner I can't control, so we'll just do those as is. And I'm going to come into ship designs and we are going to do something I like to call delete and obsolete. So we're going to delete what we're not using and we're going to obsolete the four ships that we are already building. I can't delete those because we already have one. So I'm just going to obsolete those ones. And there we go. Blank slate. Build it from scratch. All right. And then we come over to research and we are going to drill down to one lab, which is already done. And we're going to come in and First thing suggested is our warp fields. We're going to actually get that right away. That's a no-brainer, just get it. And we do start with armor plating. That's one of my first go-tos in my first round of research, but we don't have to do that this time, which is awesome. But I am going to grab our recreation systems right away, our basic medical systems right away, and uh, I'm also going to grab our early deflectors right away. Okay, so this level zero here, all this tech on this level here is free to queue up. You don't need any money in the bank. You don't need any resources to do any of this. You can just happily add it to the queue if you want and it won't cost you a dime. However, you get to level one. Uh, let's just have a look here. Once you get to level one, you'll see there's an initiation cost. There's 50 steel, 50 polymer, and 50 carbonate uh, required to queue that one tech up. So with that in mind, we do not want to come in here and queue up a whole bunch of technology if you're short on something. Say you're short on polymer. You only have 600 polymer when you start the game up. If you queue up 10 things that all require 50 polymer, there's 500 of your polymer gone. Probably we don't want that. <laughs> so if you're playing the more harsh extreme <clears throat> playthrough, uh, don't fill your queue or you're going to end up uh, draining a, a bunch of resources. And polymer and carbonate are two that we're maybe not going to have in our system. So uh, and in the early game, just be careful how much stuff you queue up and what level you're on. Like I said, this level is zero, uh, zero is free. This one costs stuff. So each one of these costs initiation of 500. That one only needs 50 steel and 50 polymer. This one only needs, well, only yeah, 50 steel, 50 acula, and 50 polymer, and 50 carbonate. So as you can see, if you fill this queue, I think you're not 15 things or something. If you fill this queue right away, you're going to eat away at your resource pretty quick. Uh, I just got level zero stuff here for now. I'll leave it at that. All right. So I think with that, uh, we have an unknown ship here. Sorry about that. Either a pirate base or something we can repair. I'm not sure. I'll have to run over and have a look. And with that, I think we can get going. Let's hit the play button and see what we get. <laughs> 